Hi everybody, this is Adam again back with The Game Machine bringing you a produced video. That's right, I don't have my computer moved here, but with some of my tax money I was able to get a laptop, so I'll be able to edit and do some stuff. We got an Undernight Inbirth review coming soon, thanks to the people at Access Games for hooking me up with that, so thank you guys so much. So, but anyway, let's talk about... A little controversy, a little bit of price gouging. Anyway, so I didn't get to talk about this before, but if you don't know, I'm just going to go ahead and let you know what's going on. Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, which is a four way fighting game between the characters of Blaze Blue, Undernight, Persona 4 Arena, and Ruby, the animated series by Rooster Teeth, is coming out now officially coming out on the 5th of June. There was some controversy about the DLC because they announced 20 characters at launch and then 20 DLC characters, two of those characters being the main protagonist in Ruby, which pissed a lot of people off. Not only the fact that, you know, they're like, oh, by the way, there's going to be 20 DLC characters after this. <laughs> yeah, and you're locking up two of the most popular characters behind DLC, which is part of the cast, and apparently their names spell out Ruby, so I, I don't really watch a lot of Ruby. I've only seen a few episodes, so don't kill me on that if I got that wrong, but I think that's how that worked. But anyway, the point is that, yeah, this is a big fiasco, big PR nightmare. So, last night, Evo announced their upcoming games for the main stages of Evo. And Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle was one of them. They had a trailer which was the same from Japan Evo, I believe, which had Blake from Ruby and it lists as DLC. So people flipped out. So what did they do this time? They announced that she's free DLC and her buddy Yang is free DLC as well. All good, right? All good in the neighborhood? Yeah, everybody happy now? What about those other 18 characters? Hmm? Those other 18 characters. Yeah, we can't forget about those now, can we? So, here's, here's the thing. Some people are A-OK -okay with just the Ruby characters being fine. The other 18, we'll give you everything. We'll sell our firstborn son. We'll do anything for you to give us a you know, a, another, you know, version of a Dachi or whatever. So, you know, some people are okay with that. And other people, like my good friend Jerome Talos, and I'll put a link to his video below, it's what inspired me to actually do this video, he actually had raised some good concerns, and I had some concerns as well. So, get a little bit of the news here of the game. They announced in Japan during an interview that the game was not going to be a full retail price game, so it'd be $60. Less. So whatever retail games cost in Japan, normally it's going to be cheaper than that. Some people are guessing like maybe what equivalent of a $40 game would be here. So, okay, if it's going to be $40 here, and then, you know, you're going to charge these extra characters, and if it's only going to be, and they even said in the interview that it's not going to be more than, look, not much more than the actual game itself. So if it's like 60 or 70 bucks all together to get all that, probably not that bad. But here's the thing, we have no idea what the US price is. They've not announced it. I've heard some people say, oh, it's $40, but they've never confirmed it. There's not even a pre-order available at Amazon or GameStop or Best Buy or anywhere. So we have no idea what the price is. They've never came out and said what the price is for the US. I'd love to find out. Maybe I can go on Twitter and bug one of their PR people and see if maybe we can get some answers or something. But you know, if we do, I'll definitely, definitely update you guys on that. Um, so yeah, we don't know what the cost of the game is going to be. Are they going to, like in America, just be like, oh, we're going to charge the little 60, or are they actually going to make it like 40 or 50 bucks? And Jerome pointed this out too, that Art System Works has a history with their games, good or bad, depending on who you ask, but they allow you to download certain characters for free, like as soon as the game launches for a limited period of time, like a week or two, and then after that it goes paid. So, are these free characters going to be the same exact way or not? Some people are speculating, yeah, it could be. 
And, you know, it may it very well could be, or they may just not do it just so they don't get any backlash, but, you know, it just really is very confusing. And the prices of the DLC, are these going to be like normal prices? Because from what I've seen of Arc System War games in the past, DLC characters could be individually priced at like six and seven ninety nine. So you got eighteen characters of that price. Well, let me just do some math real quick. Let's just, for the sake of argument's sake, we go into a calculator. Let's just say it's eight bucks. Eight bucks times eighteen. That's a hundred forty four dollars for DLC characters. A hundred forty four dollars, and I'm sure they'd probably have a bundle pack to make it cheaper. But $144 for characters. And a lot of these characters have been used in other games. I mean, they come from previous games, so it's not like Guilty Gear Exard, uh, where they redid the models and stuff, and it was all 3D and new engine and everything. No, these are just like, we got some sprites here to use, we can save some money and make some money. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, that could be up to $144 if they charge 8 bucks per DLC character. You know, so... I see some people celebrating this whole thing with the two characters as a win. Me, it's kind of a wait-and-see approach. I really don't like how they're doing this. I think they really jumped the shark with it. Is it cool that they planned all these other characters ahead of time? A lot of game developers do it. It's nothing new. It's something they always done, but most of them keep it to the vest. They don't go, by the way, we're planning on having 500 characters by the end of the game's life cycle. You know, no, no, you want to build that suspense up. You want to, you know, still make money in the future and stuff. You just want to say, yeah, we're going to support the game, but you don't want to tell everybody, you know, like, yeah, we're going to charge you a fuck ton. No, people don't want to feel that way. And I can't blame them. So my thoughts on this whole thing is this, that if they get the pricing right for the game, for the DLC, it may not be so bad. In fact, I think they should even throw a few more characters free. I think they should at least make, I think this would be generous of them, I doubt they'd do it, but I think they should at least make 10 of those 20 DLC characters free. So yeah, 10 free characters and then the other 10 you pay for and they're like, you know, a couple bucks each or maybe 10, 15 bucks, you know, if you buy them in a character pass or something like that. I think that's the route they should go. You know, in a perfect world, they would put all 40 in the game and not charge us an extra dime, but they business. They got to make some money. They got to pay the baby mamas. So, guys, let me know what you think. I've rambled on for too long. Also, stay tuned for the Undernight Inbirth EXC latest, I think that's how you say it, review, provided by ARCs, not ARCs, <laughs> Axis Games. Um, and also, thanks to Jerome for inspiring me to do this video. Check out his channel. does a lot of good fighting game content. Also covers some SMT games. SMT games. I can't talk. I think he's doing some Monster Hunter stuff. Go check him out. Just go support him. And until next time, everybody, game on.